your action there. And these are one-time use? One-time use, okay. yep. So the items are one-time use. Then we have the buildings, which are long-term. Right. Um, Engine so build type. Exactly, mm -hmm. yep. So we have um, walls, fortification, marketplace. Um, so most of the buildings will defend you, give you money, um, or help you in some long-term way. And then okay. there's also buildings that give victory points. So um, the marketplace, for example, after you successfully buy an item, unit, or building, receive one gold. So that's a good way, as you're acquiring more things, to get gold back. Mm -hmm. um, and there's lots of various cards in the building deck like that. Um, so for building a building, you pay the cost listed on the bottom of the building. Mm -hmm. You take that building and put it in front of you and put turn counters on it. And then later on, you can use your worker to perform actions to remove those turn counters from the building. Okay. Um, so it takes time for buildings to come out. And once the last turn counter gets removed, that building is now in play and you get that ability. Very interesting, mm -hmm. okay. So those are buildings, so that's the next action. Then there's recruiting. So in addition to items and buildings, you also have units. So there's three face-up units you can choose from. If you notice, these two knights are stacked. If there's anything that's a duplicate of something that's already out, they always get stacked. So there's always three unique things you can choose from. Okay. So if this knight gets bought, the other knight just stays there. No new card flips out. Um, so each person has their kingdom. So Jillian will be the stag, I'll be the wolf. He can be the bear, and he can be the eagle or phoenix. Oh, yeah. So basically what will happen is when we build a unit, let's say I build this unit, I'll put it face up in my castle. Mm -hmm. The way you know whose unit is what is based on the way it's facing on the board. So my units will face this way, oh, okay. Will's will face this way, AG's will face this way, and Jillian's will face this way. Okay. Um, when you build a unit, you build it in one of these three spaces in your castle, um, and then you put a new counter on it. New counters just say this is a new unit. It can't move or attack the turn it's built. Got it. Um, after that, at the beginning of your turn, you'll remove this counter, and once your actions are done, you can move and attack with each of your units. Each unit can move up to two spaces and attack up to two times. Okay. The way combat works is, let's say someone had this general. Um, if I attack the general, I will deal two damage to him, because mm -hmm. that's my combat value, and the general will deal one damage back to me. Once you take damage equal to or greater than your health, let's say the knight attacked again, the general has four health and four damage, so the general would die. When a unit dies, um, in this case, this would be Will's unit, so you can choose to pay two gold to add it to your research, which mm -hmm. will let you buy it back later if you'd like, mm -hmm. or you can choose to just scrap it, get rid of it, and not have it for later. Okay. Um, research, in addition to researching things that die, you can also perform a research action. So what happens is, um, if you don't like what's face up, or you just want more options, you can choose either the buildings, items, or unit stack, draw three cards from the top of one, look at those three cards, add one to your research, which is a pile that you get to buy from later on, the same way you would the face-up cards, okay. put one back on top of the deck, and one on the bottom. So it gives you a little control over what flips out and what other players have access to. So that's it for the leader actions, um, but then your worker also has one special action they can perform as well. So the upgrade action, um, you pay five gold, draw two upgraded workers, and choose one to replace this worker. So the upgraded workers, which are right there, right here, thank you. <laughs> um, so there's an upgraded worker stack. Basically, you say, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want you to specialize in something. Then you draw two cards from the upgraded workers choose. deck. This okay. is your worker saying, hey, I want to be a miner or a builder. You choose which path you want them to pursue, and then you put that next to the worker who's pursuing it. You then put three turn counters on it, and then you would develop this the same way you develop a building. Once this is done, it replaces the worker. Mm -hmm. um, each one has a special ability that just lets them do better in one of these five actions. Mm -hmm. So there's a scientist who's good at researching, a miner who's good at mining, a recruiter who's good at recruiting, etc. Mm -hmm. They can still do all of these actions, they're just really good at one of them. Um, so that's the game. Uh, there's a whole list of the victory point cards right here. Um, there are different win conditions, kind of, so there's different ways to get victory points. So okay. you can just build buildings, which give straight up victory points. Um, civilians is a unit you can build, and while you keep it alive, you get a victory point. Flag bearer gives you victory points uh, based on how many units you have in the center of the board. Holy Grail, you equip to a unit, and if you get that unit to the center, you get two points as long as you can keep him there. Interesting. And then Excalibur, you equip to a unit. It gives that unit an extra attack, and you get a victory point every time that unit kills another unit. Okay. So those are all the different ways to gain victory points, and the goal is to have some sort of mix of those methods to obtain six victory points. All right, so I guess we could dive in. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about defending your castle? 
Yes, well, thank you. Um, so one other thing, in addition to attacking other units, you can also attack players' castles. Okay. Um, so you can't move through units, you can't move through walls, and you can't move into opponents' castles. Okay. Um, so if I move my knight here, if you don't have any units there, I can attack your castle. Okay. Um, what happens then is no matter how much attack I have, I will always only deal one damage to your castle, mm -hmm. and your castle will counterattack for one. Okay. Um, so basically, my knight will be able to deal three damage to your castle before he dies. If I manage to take you down to zero HP, I get two victory points, an extra worker, and you're out of the game. Oh. So that normally doesn't happen. I'd say it happens in 5% of games, and when it does, the game's over in three or four turns anyway. Yeah, yeah. But it's something that can happen, so it's suggested that you build some sort of defense, whether that be an army it's, or it's a wall. So or... And that, that's kind of interesting because you're, you're dealing with a lot of resource management, engine building, mm -hmm. and some Euro concepts, but like... One of the most frowned upon mechanic in a Euro game is elimination. Yep. So yeah. that'll be that'll be very interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. One second. Yeah. And we one thing that's different about this is it's not required elimination. And right. like I said, it happens in probably one out of every twenty games, most of those being two player games, where the game is over as soon as the player's eliminated. Okay. It also gives the player a huge bonus. They get an extra worker and two victory points. So it's in everybody else's best interest to stop that player unless they're going to win either way. Okay. So normally we find that when a player gets eliminated, the game's over in three turns. Sometimes that's the player who eliminated them, but most times it's actually another Somebody player. Somebody else, yeah, because yeah. they, they had to they spend all their resources, spend resources yeah. to do that. And okay. when they're spending their resources, the player they're attacking typically uses all their resources to defend themselves. So right. it takes a while and usually isn't worth the investment. But every once in a while, people find a way. So. so, okay, so to start the game, what do we do here? How are we dive in? Yeah, so we can dive in. Basically, um, we'll have Jillian go first, just so we can oh. kind of see two turns mm -hmm. before you guys go. Mm -hmm. um, what we'll do is we will each choose a leader. Um, there are some leaders that are a little better with two workers than with one worker, so okay. I'm just going to pull out those five. Um, since Jillian goes first, AJ will actually pick the first leader and then okay. pass counterclockwise. Um, um, and um, and um, just, so you, just so you know, Flag Bear is actually out in play, so that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's easy grabs for anybody yep. who, okay. who would like to acquire that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so victory point wise, right now we have the Flag Bearer. And that's where is that? I'm sorry. That's oh, that one's this one. So this one gives you a victory point for every two units you have in the center if mm -hmm. he's also in the center. Okay. <coughs> so he's a central control unit. And then we don't have any other victory point cards out yet. Do you play a lot of Euro style games? Uh, more more recently, yes. More recently, I, okay. I I like to play. I like balance it in with mm -hmm. the yeah. with um other with other games, but I like Euro styles because there's no, there's no luck other than drawing cards. So mm -hmm. I, like, I was I was actually I was thrown into Euros. Um, mm -hmm. My first interview I did with Geekspiel was with the Tall Serta. Oh, so okay. I was like. <laughs> Like okay, I've never really played Euros before, right. so I'm I'm kind of interviewing the Euro awesome. king. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so what um, that geek spiel, that week long stuff that you guys do? Mm -hmm. When do you typically do that for someone? Is that the first week of their campaign? Or? Uh, it could be in the middle of the campaign. Okay. Uh, you said three weeks you're launching. Yeah. I think we have an opening, so okay. Let us know. Sweet. Yeah, definitely. And that's just uh, tweet. You could just you can. Uh, Send a message to Matt, who runs okay. it's he's it's just at at the Geek Spiel at the on Geek Twitter. Spiel. Okay, sweet. Um, all right, so what am I doing? I, I choose one of these. You choose now? one. Yep. I think I'm. So I'll, I'll, I'll do Diedrich the discerning. All right, so they're all balanced. It's not. Mm -hmm. It won't make too much of a difference. It's usually just kind of based on oh, your play style. That's a that's a that's a hmm. risk of reward. <laughs> so he starts the game with an extra twelve gold, mm -hmm. but he has to put three turn counters on his leader, mm -hmm. and um, while his, while the turn on on his leader, mm -hmm. and while the turn counters are there, he um he cannot move any of his units. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be immobilized for a couple of turns. But he starts with plus twelve gold, mm -hmm. plus twelve gold. Yeah. So we should all watch out. Mm -hmm. And these turn counters get removed automatically. I don't have to remove them. Okay, so what's the yeah. turn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these are different than these. Okay. All right. Okay, um, so... Jillian will start. I am... <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use my first worker to collect four gold. Um, and then with... Uh, 
Sabrina's ability, I'm able to buy an item without having to use a uh, worker action. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and spend that. Oh, wait. Class nine. So first, I'm going to use this worker to collect um, the four more gold that I need. Then I'm going to use Sabrina's ability to spend nine and buy the hour. So the hourglass, it's a one-time use. When she uses it, she gets to take a second turn after her turn. Mm. So that'll give her a bonus turn at some point in the future. Mm, that's pretty excellent. Mm. And then at this point in my turn, if I had any units um, that were able to move, that's when I could move them. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, just so, this so person. So basically, uh, by phase, mm -hmm. every, every single individual turn is by phase, move, move phase. phase. Yep, um, exactly. So I'm going to use this worker to mine for four as well. Um, then I'm going to use this worker to grab a marketplace. This is I get reached. This is interesting. Where's the marketplace? Oh, I got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's gold mine. You're good. Yep, I'm good. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same thing you guys did with my first worker, and I'm gonna mine for four. Um, and then I am going to, this is like the risk reward component here. Diedrich? Uh, definitely has high risk reward. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to pay four. Uh, so pretty much just get back what I, what I did. With, and, and, uh, his, his, uh, is as an action. So as I, an action. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to buy the first building card. All right. So keep in mind, whatever you see, you'll have to take that many turns to bring it into play too. All right. Minus just making one. sure. Just Minus making sure you one. understand the risk. All right. One the you broke even. So, and then it's just two turns. So all of them are minus one. We, oh, okay, yeah. So um, we changed one, that mechanic okay. a little bit. So in yep. one turn, so where do, where do my building cards go? Um, right. So you put them in front of you. You can put them next to your workers right. or above your workers. So in one turn, one mm -hmm. per turn, I will then be able to remove damage counters from a mm -hmm. unit in my castle. Yep, okay. and it'll take, so these time counters will be removed with action. So next turn, you can use an action to remove that right. to bring it into play. Yep. Yep, cool. All right. Uh, so these get untapped at the beginning yep. of your turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I use untapped because I play magic. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Which you cannot actually use in rulebook no. because it is a no. it, they own the rights to that. We that turn term. we well. turn our workers forty five degrees. <laughs> yeah, you, as a designer, you can't use the term tap. Yeah. You'll get sued by. Okay, I, of the coast. Yep. I did not know that. I'm the mind of this guy. <laughs> I did know that. <laughs> Which is good. I'm gonna I'm gonna mine for four gold, and then I'm gonna spend that four gold immediately to get one of those knights. All right. And then he goes right there. Oh, yeah. And we'll just do I have Fears of Fears, so I... Oh, I, you can move right away. So I do not get summoning sickness with that guy. That's probably copyrighted, too. Sickness. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and while they're inside my castle, they get plus one attack. I'm just going to leave him there. All right. Julian, you're back up. All right. Um, I'm going to use this guy to mine for four gold. Mm-hmm. See, she has Sabrina and Beatrice, so she's good with items and buildings. Mm -hmm. I don't like at all. Oh, wait, no, she doesn't. She doesn't have that. What am I <laughs> you can't have two leaders. You can't have two leaders. Yeah, wait a second. I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking. I've had a long day. Uh, then I'm I'm feeling like seeing his knight coming, I'm going to want to get one of my own. So oh. I'm going to spend more yeah. to get that. Okay, that somebody, guy. somebody replace that. Should, yeah, I, keep it? Should yes, I go I behind it. the. No, okay. I got it. I'm looking at I'm looking at value now, and I'm Maybe. thinking that I made the wrong decision. Units so, units are often one of the best, and and, and they're expensive. So mm -hmm. this one, that, using him for that, mm -hmm. is probably the better bet. Well, one thing you can keep in mind too is if you research, you get to choose what goes back on top. So if you see something that's valuable, you could use that to be able to oh, manipulate okay. your odds too. All right, so we're gonna move the counter here. Um, so I'm gonna use both of my workers to remove these two counters so that my marketplace is in play. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, this, does I have to do that? Yes, so it would okay. be one of your workers' actions. And you don't have to do that right now. If well, you don't want to no, use your mark, it's I, like, Definitely yeah. not, because yep. that's late game for to even look at that. <laughs> um, but I am going to go ahead and just YOLO this, take the top unit card. YOLO. And pay four. Shield bearer, you save two. Shield bearer, and I place him... Uh, anywhere in these three spaces. I am blue or green. You're blue now. Okay, I'm we blue now. I'm blue now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that makes you... Me yellow. Yeah, you're yellow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Sorry. Red. I got skipped somewhere along the road. We're all, we're all confused <laughs> now. And I paid four for that. Yep. Uh, and then the question is, where do we go from here? Because I'm gonna, I feel like I have to boost my... Uh, you can collect from four more. <laughs> I'm going to have to. I'm going to yeah, mine and collect. I don't, because I roll in the money. Go ahead, sir. So, um... Quick question. Out of yeah. the two of you, which one do you think is better at this game? Which one? Her. She's definitely Cool. Better. Cool. I'm two 
two spaces away from your castle. <laughs> I'd say, actually, I'd put it this way. In a two-player game, she normally beats me. In a okay. three- or four-player game, I normally win. It's usually how it goes. Cool, I'm two spaces away from your castle. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so the Lancer, I, the, the Lancer says that they can move after attacking, yep. and then they can move through spaces. <laughs> yep. So um, your units can move up to two spaces and attack up to two times. As okay. soon as they attack, they can't move anymore. Um, so, like, if you move this knight once and then attack something, uh-huh. your knight would be stuck. The okay. lancer right. is not. Lancer's not. Yep. And so they... Oh, okay, that, that was actually a question I had. So you mm-hmm. can't break movement in combat. Correct. Uh, For a single unit. You could move one, attack with it, and then move another. But as soon as one unit attacks, that right. unit cannot move anymore. And, and you're allowed two movements, two combats. Is that... For your entire army for a turn? For each unit. So each if you unit. have okay. six units, you can move and attack with all of them. <laughs> right. But yeah. but it can't break you can't break it up. You can't like mm-hmm. unless unless they specifically have the skill. So like exactly. I can't go one attack some well in this in this mm-hmm. argument, let's say someone who's here. Yep. One attack it and then go one attack it. Exactly. Unless I have this build. Unless, unless you have Lancer. Lancer. Yep. Okay. Got mm-hmm. it. Got um it. I'm gonna I can't <laughs> I get into games, I stand. No, no. And, and, and honestly, I am, see, at this table, it, it's a little bit deep on, on here, so, yeah. so you have to lean over, and also the glare from the light here doesn't oh, help Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I'm right there. It's annoying. And my eyes are not, my, my eyes are getting old, so I can't, I have to, like... <laughs> I hear you. Um, I am going to... I think I'm going to um, mine, and then I'm going to spend seven on the land. I end up with one. YOLO on, on purchasing here. Here we go. There you and are. That's going to go here. And then I can... That guy doesn't get summoning sickness. All right, we got another victory point card out there. Civilians. While alive, plus one victory point. Oh, okay. So you can keep it alive. You have a victory point yeah, if it dies. I definitely have the research before I do this thing again. <laughs> <laughs> you just see it on the expensive cards. <laughs> Although I've had players that... They, they're getting attacked, mm-hmm. so they try to do that, and they get stuff like civilians, which are super expensive, but useless if you're getting swarmed. Correct. Like, So it's funny, because sometimes the most valuable cards are not very mm-hmm. valuable in certain situations. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I'm get, so I'm going to make my moves. Yep, go ahead. Um, can you attack diagonally? No. Okay. Yep, so movement and attacking are all orthogonal. you got to move up or... Love side. that term. Orthogonal. <laughs> orthogonal. I learned that. I, I, I use learned that, that too. In Sagrada. Oh, that really? That's the first time okay. I saw the term uh, orthogonal. Yes, yeah, uh, but I use that all the time. I study mathematics in college, so whenever I hear okay. it, it just brings mm. me back to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just like, mm-hmm. So I'm going to move the knight one, two. Hey, where are you going? Oh, he's going Towards your castle. Going, I don't like that. He's going heavy. And I'm going right. to. Let's hit, fight. I'm going to hit you twice. Well, you got to be here. Yeah, so be, this is the castle. You have to be right there, pretty much. Yeah, so here or here or here. So now I guess he gets to smuggle in and slap you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna with I'm gonna with Well I can't move the first turn I build it, so I no, wouldn't be able true. to build and that's then true. slap him. I'd have to wait to slap him. I'd still slap him, just not I'm right gonna, away. I'm yeah. going to check out aggression. I'm gonna I'm gonna um resend that move. I'm gonna go into the center because one of the unit cards is in the center, so it'll stop that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um can you attack your own units? No. No. <laughs> what kind of strategy? What, what, what are you cooking up? We over thought there? about that, but mm. we just we just because think. with the lancer, then you could go one two attack your own unit one two three. Now yeah. you're faster. Well, no. So when you move after attacking, you finish your movement. So if okay. you go one two and attack, you could go three. Oh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you don't get bonus movement for attacking. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that. Yep. And you can. Like, <laughs> yeah. Since you don't have the summoning yeah, staff, additional. you can move that lancer okay. this so, round if yeah. you wanted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And you can do it in whatever order suits you. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go one, two, and then mm-hmm. one, two, three. Jason, you wanted to retreat. Okay. Right, really. Yeah, let me change his mind. Um, <laughs> These monarchs and their mind changes. Thanks. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take my first worker and collect four. Um, then. You know, I think I'm going to do the same with the other guy. <clears throat> Get um, four coins as well. Okay. I am going to use Sabrina's ability, though. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to spend that four to get the offhand knife. 
Okay. Um, basically, this is one that lets me attack one extra time per turn. Mm -hmm. One time when I play it. I'm going to start by. Standing up again. Yep. I'm going to start <laughs> by researching the units. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Don't look. They can look, but no one else can look. <laughs> <laughs> you can look, but no one else. <laughs> um, so I'm going to grab. Tell us, in the, tell us in the comments if you were actually able to see those cards. <laughs> Probably not. Mm -hmm. right, I'm going to steal that one, I think. I'll put this on top, <laughs> this on bottom, and then I'm going to spend seven on, actually, I'm going to spend six on my cavalry that I just drew. So is this put the eight. castle or is this the this, castle? This, right here. Okay. The, yeah, those yeah. three spaces, yeah. Okay. Wherever the castle touches, basically. So if it says wall units are inside the castle, this is the yep. space it touches. exactly. Oh, okay. hey, AJ, do you mind bumping the little uh, uh, blue counter off of my knight? Sure. There you go. Oh, yeah, it's not new anymore. All right. Sorry. Go ahead, Will. Okay. You're up. Here we go. Oh, and I get a coin for my marketplace. Here we go. Um, More risky decisions coming up? Okay, <laughs> I'm thinking. Um, Guys, he AJ, you should attack his shield bearer. It's defenseless. <laughs> just saying. Just throwing it out there. He's um, giving, you, he just gave me the dead eye. You see that? <laughs> he just... You have 15 points. <laughs> Do you see the look he gave me? <laughs> Shut up, my shield. No, you just sealed your fate now. My I, fate? Yeah, you're I, no, I, you're I, no threat to I me right now. I was going to start aggressing him very hard. But With no. what? You have nothing. Oh, no. It's not that devil man. All right, I'm researching. With what? <laughs> I'm researching. Kill me with the power of research. So that. what does the research pile do anyway? Um, so when you research, you look at the top three cards of a deck, you place one back on top, and one in your research, and one on the bottom. So what? what uh, so if it's in your research, what does that do? Sweet. And then you put one of those on the bottom. Yep. Um, if it's in your research, you can buy it later on. So okay. you have those these nine options plus whatever's in your research to acquire from. Oh, one goes in the research, you said? Yeah, one goes in your research. So one, one goes face down for you to buy later. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, this is just a little side note, but there are uh, maximums listed on your leader cards. Same. So for research, you can have a maximum of two research. Same four for his special ability on the second action. Or whatever's on top, which you just selected. Yep. All right. I like that. I like the little dig, little scry mechanic. You <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that is annoying. Is. <laughs> annoying. All right, go ahead and attack me, bro. Uh, I guess I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll prep for... Situations. You guys didn't have any attack. I know you don't. Okay. 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 An adjacent unit may control it. takes damage and the cards on this side. Okay, cool. I have a horrible unit to use. <laughs> I have a horrible unit to use as attack fodder. Sure. Sure. Or you can just come in and try to attack me. Sure, sure. Come at me. <laughs> come at me, AJ. Okay. So one thing, I, one thing I can say right now, pacing mm -hmm. in the game is actually not what I expected. Okay. Uh, it moves very quickly. Good. Um, which, which I like. Good. Um, the, I almost wonder, and I'm sure you tested mm -hmm. this out a lot. Um, so I almost wonder, with more workers involved, mm -hmm. it, does does that does that ruin pacing or? It or, ruins pacing. Okay. Yeah. So in the shortened game, we start with two workers. Go that's more. Doing, so. That's more for the purposes of defense. Um, because we like found that. that with one worker for new players that aren't familiar with the game, mm -hmm. they can sometimes get swarmed by other players. Mm -hmm. Um, with two workers, you can kind of build up more of a defense and have more options for what to do. Yeah. Right. Um, so in the full game, you actually start with one worker, and we find that that speeds things up a lot because mm -hmm. based on what you have. If you don't have any money, you just mine for gold, your turn's over. Um, so your turns go a lot faster, and I, we found that players actually consider what they're going to do on their turn more on other players' turns, mm -hmm. because less is changing. Right now, there are eight decisions made in a round, which means potentially eight of these cards could change. Mm -hmm. So by the time my turn comes around, six of these cards could be missing. They normally aren't. It's normally three or four, right. but it is different. Okay. Um, where with one worker, these in general, remain the same. So if I'm going for the gold mine, I can actually look at people's gold and see whether or not I'm actually going to get it. Mm -hmm. um, versus with more workers, there's more options. So I don't bother doing anything until it's my turn. Right. And then I take more time to make a decision. Interesting. Um, so everyone starts with one worker in a longer game, and turns move faster because of that. Okay. Um, so in a long game, typically the game ends um, in about 30 minutes per player. Right. Um, in a short game, it's actually about 20 minutes per player. So it's okay. not cut in half because turns are longer with two workers. Okay. Okay. Um, go ahead. Sorry. Um, that's, that's fine. I'm going to mine twice. All right. 
So that brings me to nine, which is annoying because he's a one five to ten. Yeah. And we've been working on this game for about three years now. Okay. So we Whoa. started in fall of 2015, um, and we haven't been working on it full time by any means. You're right. Um, but we we play tested with a bunch of our college friends, and we've kind of just been play testing it. Um, constantly ever since, um, and, it, and it's ready. This, this prototype, uh, Game Crafter? Yes, Game Crafter okay. prototype. Um, yeah, I've been working with Game Crafter. I did my senior project in high school with Game Crafter. I love, okay. <laughs> I love I them. So. Um, and their quality's gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, when I did that project, I mean, it was great for a school project, but it wasn't quite professional. Yeah. Um, we have another prototype coming. I don't like this box so much, but the mm -hmm. components inside, I mean, this is linen texture, um, I just I really like the quality of this stuff. Yeah, how much um, how much of what we, we look, we're looking at now is 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 uh, final mm -hmm. art or pro compared to prototype art? Yep. So the the art itself is pretty much what it's going to be. Uh -huh. um, so like the images that you see are what they're going to be. There's if you look super closely at the images, there's a little bit of pixelation in some of the graphic design work. That's oh, all been yeah. cleaned up. Okay. Um, so that we got. Basically, we just, when we ordered it, the mm -hmm. pixels per inch were off. So, of course, that's why we get prototypes. That's why we reorder. Of course. Um, so that's been corrected. Um, and we changed the font. So we actually got feedback from some people. We picked this font because it's a comic-style art. So we were thinking yeah. comic-style font. Mm -hmm. um, about, I'd say about 20% of playtesters mentioned it. Um, only about one, only like one or two of them liked it. Everyone else hated it. Right. Um, so we didn't but, think it'd be that big a deal, yeah, but it is. So It is, yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Cause, anyway. cause are you, so you're moving into more, more of a fantasy style? Yes. Okay. Yep, exactly. I think that's smart. Mm -hmm. I do think that's smart. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so my kids oh, yeah, has got to move. Gotta attack and stuff. Yeah, do your thing. I'm going to wail on you and you at the same time. At the same time? Sure yes. Thing. All right, I'm going to have it. my knight move and hit your shield bearer for two. Okay. And each unit can attack twice, so. Nah, I, I'm, I'm good. I have enough. All right. Okay. I have enough cannon fodder to spill. Sure. Right. Wail on both of you. Sure. Um, I'm gonna have my lancer attack once and kill your shield bearer. Ooh, so you can pay two that. gold to research it, but I don't think you have any gold, so it's gone. It's my my shield bearer. Uh, bye bye. Goodbye. And then he can move after attacking, so he's yep. gonna go one, two, and hit you for one. All right. So since I have a unit in there, I can defend mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. I won't because I'll die. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just gonna <laughs> take the hit, and then you take one as well. Yeah. Exactly. Go. Perfect. I can't reach like all the way across <laughs> yeah, the board. You're good, yeah. Uh, it's interesting too because you mentioned it as like a Civ style, but this is definitely uh, it's it's heavier combat than I expected it was going to be too. Uh, yeah. Which which uh, I'm still personally mm -hmm. I, I I'm still uh, milling over in my head, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Thank you for the follow, -up, whoever that was. <laughs> um, and. For yeah, those of you ahead. watching, the only reason why I'm targeting no, I have two reasons why I'm targeting you. First of all, you are good at this game. Am I? Good, good, reason, <laughs> good reason to target you. Second of all, you have 15 gold. Yeah, I do have uh, gold. And yeah. there are two car two units on the market that can that can give you victory points. Yeah. So I have full reason to target you. Do you? Because now I have gold that I can build things with. Yeah, you're done so now. I'm just saying. You, you're done, boy. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. um, so I'm sorry. I actually thought that he had finished his turn, so I did mine. Oh, I okay, just mined with both of those. Then with Sabrina, I bought the hammer. Yep. I'm not going to move anything. All right. Um, one thing to note, though, when I bought the hammer, though, the Holy Grail didn't Whoa! come up, so we Ooh. now have another victory point. So that item. one you equipped oh, to a I should have researched items. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have bought that off the it's top. It's funny, because, like, min-maxing uh, Daedric is actually kind of funny, especially mm -hmm. now, but I could see this being one of my favorite cards to mm -hmm. play once I was well established in the game. Mm, gotcha. Because yeah. then I know what cards are worth value and like mm -hmm. what when I should, especially as we're playing the game, I could figure, you know, later turns, we went through a bunch of cards already. I know there's a lot of value mm -hmm. later in the deck. Now I dig with research and, and really push yeah. the data. Yeah, I see that. And that in sense. like competitive fighting play and stuff like that, there's specific, there's specific strategies that people are, that mm -hmm. people you do to maximize your chances of winning and mm -hmm. like having a scenario where you mm -hmm. could pick a leader out of where there were like multiple copies of leaders and you could pick one out of the box mm -hmm. that would be that'd be good because then a person can create a strategy for one of the leaders and then be able to use that strategy in competitive play or mm -hmm. true yeah that or just or just to beat up their friends yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. also an option um i'm gonna have my cavalry attack your lancer okay cool your cavalry we're yep. both dead yep we're both dead uh, i'm gonna research mine for two gold 
You want to research so you yours? Yes, I am. I'm um, going to research. You only use one I, I collected. Oh, yep, okay. sorry. I forgot to try it. You good? Yep, I'm good. All right. So I, I definitely need to get some money. Unfortunately. Uh, and Surprisingly, you didn't get the civilian to the flag bearer. So there was another leader that we used to use um, when playtesting the game too, but we found that people just had fun with Diedrich. They usually didn't know how to use him, but at the end of the game they were very satisfied mm -hmm. with whatever happened, <laughs> even when they lost money for some reason. I think it's the luck of the draw, the gamble yeah. sort of element that people like about him in playtests. Mm. There's um, the Fantasy Strike series, or the Old Gambling Panda. Old Gambling Panda. Um, so... There is like a series of games. Sorry, real quick to upgrade. Yeah. Do I have to pay or do I just get the upgrade? So you pay, pay so it's pay five. Yep. Yep. So it's right down no, there. No, no. <laughs> nope, not doing that. No, so no. everything's four for him. Why would he pay five? Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, and one thing I do want to specify with both upgrades and building cards any discounts that apply to something apply to Deidre. So if there's a card that's like these cards cost two less, um, you're, when you bought them, they'd only cost two mm -hmm. for your scry ability. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so there's a fun. series of board games um, that have the same characters, and they always bring back a panda that's all of, that's all about like risk versus reward. The whole card. Stuff. Thank you for the raid. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, all right. So um, what we have going here, uh, if you're just joining us, uh, is the game Furtherance. It's going to be on Kickstarter in about three weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, this is Brent, and the name of the, the company you're going with? Uh, Flannel Games. Flannel Games. That's why they're wearing flannel. That's right. I've been doing this for a long. Yeah, Yo, you're time. good. Yeah. Um, and we're just we're going through a few rounds of the game, uh, but you'll be able to pick this up on Kickstarter, uh, back on Kickstarter in uh, about three weeks. So very fun check game. Out. Um, so. I think we've encapsulated a lot of it mm -hmm. in these rounds here. Yep. Yeah. Um, what do we do? Uh, walk us through like some lines of strategy in mm -hmm. your mind yeah. uh, that that you you sort of seen as successful mm -hmm. in gameplay. Yeah. So in a right now we're playing kind of a beginner game. The the goal of this style is to introduce people to things. So everyone mm -hmm. starts with two workers and we play to three victory points. In a yeah. normal longer game we'd start with one worker and play to six. Yeah. Um, in that game. What happens when you reach four victory points is you receive a second worker. Um, so you start with one, you get a second one, but the thing about victory points is that they're all changeable. So when you get victory yep. points in this game, they can get taken away from you. Mm -hmm. um, so oftentimes there's kind of two general strategies people go for with regards to victory points, um, which is the first one being either trying to get victory points that'll stay through like buildings, which are a little harder to acquire, or just trying to race to the four victory points, get a second worker, and then letting whatever you built be destroyed or die going down, and then using your second worker to rebuild right. again. Now, I, I had a question. So, yeah, so I, had, I had civilians down yep. for research. Mm -hmm. um, you said that I can when I have a research like this, I could pay for this unit or add it back in later. Is, yep. that, is that how it works? How do I do that? Um, same way you would for a face-up card. So you would recruit, pay 15, and play that unit recruit, out. The exact same system. way you would these, except only you have access to it. Okay, got yep. it. And then, and then that would... But this means I have one victory point at that point in time. Exactly, yep. So if, as soon as you build right. the civilians, you get a victory point. How many civilians are in that deck? Two. Okay, so yep. having two civilians would, allow, would gives you that jump into mm -hmm. two, like having two victory points at that point. Yep. Uh, then you just need would, would need two more to yep. do that. So there are lots of different ways to get victory points. So mm -hmm. often the strategies come down to which ways you want to pursue. Okay. Um, normally most strategies will include some building cards. Um, some oh, wow. yeah. yeah, look at that. So there are some buildings that will give you um, two victory points once you finish them. Um, some will give you one victory point. So some people won't want to build the expensive ones because um, they take a while and they cost a lot. So they might go for the smaller buildings that mm -hmm. only give one victory point. Um, so obviously the two victory point ones are cheaper per victory point. Um, so typically you'll want to build one or two of those, um, and then in addition to that, decide what else you want to do and what order you want to do it in. Um, so there's the Holy Grail, which rushes the center. Um, so the Holy Grail is really good with Fader. So Fader the Fierce allows you to move units the first turn you build them. Mm -hmm. um, so he's really good with Flag Bearer and Holy Grail strategies because Holy Grail will give you two victory points when one of your units that you put it on reaches the center of the board. And those are those permanent victory points? So these are victory points as long as, as, long as, as he's your guys there. are alive. Yep. Not permanent. And exactly. It's basically think of like King of the Hill. Yes. Yep. yep. So your guy, um, so for example, your Lancer. 
Yeah. On the turn you build him, you could use this item to equip it to him and rush him to the center. Right. So you could instantly, on that turn, receive two victory points, and with Fader the Fierce, other people may not even see it coming. So there's a little bit of a sneak attack element that he has. Mm -hmm. um, but the Holy Grail is really good if you have control of the center, or if you have four victory points already and you're just racing for those last Which, two and no right. one's in the center to block you. But it's not, it's not cheap. And no, so. definitely not. Yeah, and none of the victory points are. So the mm -hmm. game is built that you, you build an engine at first, you get some money from some of the buildings and things like that, um, and then over time you're able to afford the victory point cards. Sometimes mm -hmm. people will go for them right away. Um, but yeah, it just depends on what strategy you want to do. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you for showing the game. Yeah, thank you for having <laughs> us. Appreciate it. Um, and definitely, I'm going to keep my eyes out for this, and then awesome. we're going to be talking, mm -hmm. hopefully get you on Geekspiel as well. Yeah. Uh, so catch us later on Geekspiel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's, so that's pretty much, I, I'm, yeah. I like how quickly the turns went. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That is a, that is an, uh, that is an, a component of a game mm -hmm. that I think can be very important to somebody getting bored and forfeiting the game. Because yeah. if somebody gets bored and forfeits the game, that means that they probably won't play it again. Yeah. So if you don't want, at all costs, you don't want somebody yeah. to get bored and forfeit the game. And if mm -hmm. the turns go so quick, mm -hmm. especially if you can introduce it as a two-player game, mm -hmm. yeah. um, then you can, um, then you get more immersed in the experience and you spend more, a large percentage of the time actually playing and not watching another player play. Right. Like, uh, there's a game that I play called The Pursuit of Happiness. It was a good game, mm -hmm. but we were playing with five players and everybody was, like, mulling over their uh, their worker placement right. turn. Right. It took five hours. Right. And, and, and that's what he mentioned. He mentioned that, you know, in this traditional type of strategy game, uh, players are usually formulating their plan mm -hmm. while other players are playing their turns. Uh mm -hmm. This, I don't see any, I, I really don't see, I see less chance of analysis paralysis here, mm -hmm. uh, AP, as, as, as they coin it. Yep. Um, and, uh, no, I, I, I'm i I'm really interested to see how, like, I'm sure you did a lot of research mm -hmm. going into the Kickstarter, too. Mm -hmm. what, what, like, are you guys, like, really sure of funding at mm -hmm. this point, or nervous, or? I'd say we're nervous. Um, so we actually launched a Kickstarter when we were first designing the game yeah. um, to finish the design of the game, and it yeah. failed. So we managed to raise, I think at our peak, we raised like 3,200 um, for that one, which, yeah, isn't bad at all. Um, and But we knew nothing about it. We did no research. We didn't. So we kind of just dove in head first. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we took a step back. We've taken these past two years since we did that Kickstarter, um, and we really like made sure we play tested the game made sure everything is as balanced as it can be um and now we've spent these last few months doing marketing so we okay, launched our instagram about three or four months ago we've been posting every single day to that yeah. um, we post to our twitter a lot you're yeah me yeah. and you have been talking on twitter quite yeah. a bit um <laughs> facebook um so we're doing a lot of social media stuff um, we don't have, we have, I think, almost 400 followers on our Instagram. Okay. Um, Twitter, I think we just hit 50, and Facebook, we just were around the 50 mark as well. Okay. Um, all the pages right now are strictly furtherance, because even though we're launching under Flannel Games, right. Flannel Games won't exist if furtherance so is, it, is it just furtherance or furtherance game? Um, so it's furtherance game, so when you go to those social medias, it's at furtherance game. Uh -huh. um, and our website is furtherancegame.com. So, okay, um, so so go check it out. Uh, I Dragon says that the, he thinks the game the game seems really neat. I agree. Thank you. Um, and and I agree. I, mm -hmm. I think that uh, Kickstarter is a tough place right now. Where 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 do you have uh, your backing number? Like I'm sorry, not your backing number. Your um, I would say MSRP, but what's your initial uh, cost? Yeah. Cost so first, first we're one. planning on the MSRP. We're planning on the game is forty nine ninety nine. We're planning on launching it on Kickstarter for thirty nine. Yeah. Um, and we're planning on giving free shipping for U.S. backers. Oh, wow, that's great. Um, so, yeah, exactly. And we're hoping that that will really help people um, be able to back it. We, I know yeah. you talked earlier in your last um, interview about the person getting 10%. Mm -hmm. um, we've calculated it, and we're, at the end, we, we won't have that. Yeah, <laughs> um, no, no, which, but again, yeah. but again you're, you're, you have an aggressive strategy just to really get your game out there. And the game exactly. Out there. Yep. And, and, and like you said, MSRP is 50, mm -hmm. yep. but you're cutting that out. You're cutting out your profit, so yep. that that five percent or ten percent mm -hmm. you're cutting out, so that you can get the game into people's hands, exactly. and and then 
really hope and pray for that second round. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I mean, we've gotten great feedback. We've gone to a lot of these types of events, and mm -hmm. everyone loves the game. Like, it's just very interesting. It's very unique. There's a lot that happens, yeah. but without, again, giving that analysis paralysis. There's enough mm -hmm. to think about that it's different every time you play, but not so much that it's overwhelming. Um, so we've even found casual gamers who sit down. At first, they look at it, and they go, this isn't the kind of game I would play, very true. and then they love it anyway. So... Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've gotten a lot of that, and I think once it gets into people's hands, I think people will see that, and they'll I, really like I it. I agree. So, yeah. I'm not a casual gamer. So I can't relate to that. I'm not a casual gamer. All right, so we're going to take another little break here. Uh, again, thanks. thanks so yeah, thank you so much. Yep. Appreciate it. Uh, please check out furtherancegame.com. Mm -hmm. It'll be on Kickstarter, Kickstarter in a few weeks. Uh, but we're going to take a break now, and we'll be back with another game. We'll clean up. You can watch us clean up, hang out, <laughs> and chat. I'm going to put some chill music on for you guys, so you can all... I'll relax for a little bit, but we're yep. going to do that now. Thanks, guys.